If you've watched this channel for about a year or more, you will probably be familiar with the saga of juice boxes and juice net. For those who don't know, these are juice box EDSE charging stations. They talk to your car and make sure that you can charge your car safely. When they first launched, they had some fancy features, including the ability to load share on a single electrical circuit, making use of a then brand new NEC wiring regulation that allowed two different charging stations to share a single breaker as long as they were communicating with one another. The company that originally designed these charging stations, it was originally eMotor Works, was sold many years ago to a company called NLX. And NLX operated the JuiceNet software and the JuiceNet charging stations for a while. There was a nifty smartphone app. And unfortunately, over time, both the software and the support from NLX became less and less reliable. Fast forward to the start of last year when NLX announced unceremoniously that it was exiting the North American market and owners of the JuiceNet equipped charging stations would be yeah, out of luck. And so an open source and community program sprung into force with the idea of wrenching control back from NLX into the hands of the owners of these charging stations. If you've watched the channel over the last year or so, you've probably seen some of our other videos on the topic. But if you haven't, I'll leave links in the down below so you can catch up with where we are right now. And last time I made a video on these, I was using software on my home server that allowed me to connect each of these charging stations to their own private network, ban them from accessing the internet, and wrenched control using the software that they had on them while also preventing them from phoning home. It was very nerdy. But luckily, the folks at Open EVSE, who already got plenty of support in the community, Chris Howell, the, the lead person at Open EVSE, has sent me this, which is a replacement board for this, which is the original controller in these units. Now, we've already replaced one. I'm going to replace the controller in here with an open source, freely modifiable, controller that will wrench control back, remove all traces of JuiceNet or NLX, and give me full control over my charging station again. Let's do it. Inside this package is a prototype drop-in replacement board for the juice box charging station. Now, I have a V1 juice box. There's also a board being developed for V2, and I should point out that this is an early prototype board, and I've already been told by the team at Open EVSE that this one has a few differences to the production version. Uh, one of them is that the LEDs on the front panel don't light up in the way that they will in the production version, which is fine, because I don't need LED lights on this. But by Connecting this to the innards of this charging station and ripping out the original NLX or eMotor Works board, I can again control exactly how much power is going to my car. Open EVSE also tracks how much energy I'm using. It integrates with things like Home Assistant and it also integrates with the Open Energy Monitoring System. I will link to all of those in the down below. It also allows you to set it up so that you can divert energy, excess energy that you're generating on the roof of your home through your solar panels and send it to your EV. If it's a cloudy day and your solar panels aren't generating, it can tell this to slow down your charging rate or even pause it until you are again generating free electrons. So without any further ado, let's open this up and put this board in. Now, obviously, I've already turned off the breaker. You should turn off the breaker and make sure that there are no lights. There's no power going to these units. I've already verified that. So now I'm going to remove these four bolts and take the front of the unit off. Now out of the box, the replacement drop-in board for this includes a Wi-Fi module. So you can use the Wi-Fi antenna that's built into these units. And it also has its own 
captive portal so you can use a smartphone app to either connect to the network that this generates automatically or you can program it to connect to your home wi-fi network all right now when you remove this it is metal you can hear uh, there is a little wire inside for the leds and you just need to move that connector and then remove it this is the little ribbon cable be careful because it's kind of fragile next up we're going to uh, loosen these four bolts now two of these bolts have little grounding uh washers on them and two don't so just make sure that you remember which ones go where and we're also going to have to snip these little uh, cable ties to make sure that we can connect everything back up but first up i'm actually going to unplug everything so we reuse the relay this is the electrical switch that activates and deactivates that sends power to your car if there's a problem with the circuit or it detects a ground fault this will not close which keeps your car and you safe so with a nine millimeter socket or wrench or whatever you want to call it we're just going to undo this and before we remove the board we're also going to disconnect the antenna because we don't want to break the antenna but in order to make it easier, I'm actually going to take these bolts out. In case you are not sure, the two with the grounding washers, there's one here on the bottom left and top right. All right, so with everything out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and gently lift this board forwards. I don't know what that was. Oh, it was a standoff. So I just pulled off the antenna and then two of these little standoff pieces also fell out. So I'm going to retrieve those from the floor as well. Now I've got both boards out side by side. Let's look at the differences. So this is the original uh, eMotorWorks designed board that was later adopted by NLX. And this is the Open EVSE board. Now the Open EVSE board physically is the same size, but this one has a lot fewer components on it and that's just the basic design of the open evse but it doesn't mean that it's less safe or it has less functionality in fact this has more functionality and it relies on an esp32 chip which is down here it's got a small microcontroller there and so it doesn't need quite as many discrete components as this the board is actually a little bit lighter uh, the other thing I want to draw your attention to is that it doesn't have a battery on the back and this particular board here does and it started to corrode. Batteries corroding are bad. They can actually prematurely damage circuit boards. So I'm kind of glad that we are replacing this with this. And while there's no necessarily direct correct way of putting it, I'm actually going to put it so that the little ESP chip is at the top here because then I can more readily connect this antenna cable. So let's put it in and then I'm going to start putting it back on. So I'm going to put the earth clamp pieces on first. Grounding straps, call it what you will. Just a little, uh, little tooth washer just to make sure that everything is, is properly treated. The board has a ground to the back of the case. Obviously, this is a fully metal case, uh, which is kind of nice. Uh, later versions of the juice box is plastic, uh, but these ones are very well made. They're nicely rated. They've got a nice strong seal on them and they prevent water ingress rather nicely. Now, nobody at Open EVC, as far as I'm aware, has given a, a talk setting for this, but just be smart. You know, don't overdo it. Next, to make sure that I put everything back properly, there is a lovely how-to online that just makes sure that you put the right connector in the right place on the board. So we're going to follow this now and uh, we're going to connect the AC wires. It says identify the AC wires coming from the circuit board relay module, um, connect AC input red and black and AC test blue and orange. So we are going to look for a red and a black 
which is this one. And then we're going to look for blue and orange. And we can confirm that they actually go to the relay board. This is the relay board here. Let's make sure that we follow the instructions and we put them in the right place on the board. So if I click on this picture here very nicely, it shows me that the AC input one goes down here. And you can tell this board is a little old because it's not actually red anymore. It's more of a pink. Uh, and then the blue and orange one goes on here. Make sure you get the orientation right. And then it tells you to connect the low voltage wires. Well, I already did that. I put the, uh, the Wi-Fi antenna back on there. But then it says connect the donut coil without the additional wire wrap to the amp CT connector. So what it means by this is there is a sensor here with a little wire wrap around it. This is the wire wrap, it's pink, and then it's got the black and white cable coming out of it. But then there's another one here, which is a current clamp that doesn't have that. So this is the one we're looking for. Uh, and we're going to connect that. And then uh, I'm going to connect more wires. Uh, I need to connect the three pin connector that goes to the relay uh, for the charge handle. And I'll put that in like so, and it goes on. Again, this is where it gets a bit messy because you have to make sure that you're not looping cables around one another. When I did the top one, it was a, a bit of a pain. So that goes on like that. That looks correct to me. And then I'm going to do the donut coil with the additional wire wrap uh, is going to go to the top CGFI connector up top here. And then this one goes in here and because this is just a loop of wire it doesn't really matter which way around it goes but you do need to put it the right way around otherwise it won't snap into place so now everything is plugged in there are some extra things here that we don't need to worry about but everything is plugged in and connected to the board the only thing we have to put back on now is the front led lights which as i've already told you i don't think they are set up properly to work on this board because this is a prototype as opposed to a production one. The production ones are now being made. Now, as a disclaimer, I am involved with this project. I've helped with uh, with some early organization and I've also been testing out the, the Juice Pass proxy. This is obviously a prototype as opposed to a production unit, um, but it's very well put together and I'm very happy to test it out. And uh, Chris sent me these because I'd previously ordered my own open EVSE controller and I was going to actually make my own internal mounts to put in a regular open EVSE controller. But all of the connectors were different and that would have required some significant hackage on my part. So I'm very glad that this is all here and working now. Obviously, if you're going to do this yourself, you're doing it at your own risk and you're taking on board the fact that you're replacing original hardware with aftermarket open source hardware and you should be cognizant of all of the risks associated with it you are working with something that's capable of transferring high amounts of power but as long as you do it right it should be all good now i don't know if this is going to light up or not so i'm going to go and turn the power back on and see what happens as i suspected the leds aren't working on this particular board but we can check to see if it's working by grabbing a mobile phone and then we're going to look for an open EVSE Wi-Fi network that will have just randomly appeared. And here we have it. Open EVSE and then a, a series of numbers. I'm going to connect on that. It's going to ask me for the password. And the password, the open EVSE, is the default password. We're going to join that network. And then hopefully it will give me a, a static page that says open EVSE. So I'm going to go to the uh, open in browser and it will open the open EVSE page and then I can set the unit up. And there we go. It's giving me the open EVSE page and then I can set up, uh, I can give it a name, I can tell it how much power I want it to pull and also I can connect it to other networks in my home. I'm going to stop the video at this point because from this point onwards, everything else here is just a standard open EVSE install. 
and there's plenty of resources online that explain how it all works. If you have two juice boxes that are sharing the same electrical circuit, i.e. they're on one breaker, you can't just now use both of these side by side. You do have to go through further setups in order to make sure it's safe. You have to make use of something called the Open EDSE Heartbeat feature uh, or the Solar Divert feature. And uh, if you want me to do another video on that, I'm more than happy to. But if you have just one uh, juice box charging station, which many people do, you're fine just following what I did here and then following the basic setup online that should get you up and running and charging without any connection anymore to JuiceNext or NLX or the company that's just acquired these charging stations in North America. Literally, as of the time of filming it, they've just started sending out emails to people saying, hey, we want to manage your charging stations. Early indications are, though, that it's a little bit of a metaphorical train wreck. So take from that what you will. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got thoughts, make sure you leave them in our Discord chat room on our Patreon page, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon or Blue Sky. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are part of the massive community of fans around the world that help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team, and making sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. We now have new Patreon tiers that support a wide range of donation amounts, ranging from $1.50 US a month, or if you'd prefer, about $15 a year. A massive welcome to our newest supporters, Carol Bulawa, Anna Atamelodian, Scott Wilson, OB1, Merrick Hurst, Smokey Lothar, Falafel Kosa, J01, Gary, Christopher, Randall Astaro, and Dimitri. To join the list and get your shout out, become a paid Patreon member for your moment of fame. And remember, you can now gift a membership to someone else. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll also find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations, and we even have a good old-fashioned PO box you can reach us at, address you'll also find below. And if you're in need of some swag, our TE Swag Store is also linked. So we can focus on making our content even better this year and reduce team burnout, we're switching our release days to Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday on our main channel. And if you like something a little more laid back at the weekend, over on Take Two, you'll find a release there on a Sunday. Transport Evolved is going through some pretty big changes this year though, so keep your eyes and ears peeled as we have some more exciting ways you can support us and more exciting ways to interact with us coming very soon. If you want more, the mighty algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we also think that this one is well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving! <laughs>